Welcome to the Paperless Productivity Podcast, where we have experts give you the insights, know-how, and resources to help you transform your workplace from paper to digital, all while making your work life better at the same time. Thanks for joining us. My name is Steve Liskey, your host, and today we're going to be talking with Washtenaw County about their RFP management solution that they configured using OnBase. Washtenaw has been recognized many times as a top 10 digital county. The county seat is located in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And today's special guest is Jeff Arbogast, who is an application specialist with the county. Welcome, Jeff. Thank you, Steve. Hey, Jeff. Uh, so tell me, what, uh, what kind of challenges was Washtenaw experiencing with your prior RFP management process? Okay. So the prior process included a lot of manual things like email, um, up manually uploading everything to the county website, and that didn't really have an organized management process for the RFP process. Um, there were, would be a lot of emails going back and forth. There would probably be multiple versions of the RFP document, and that could cause quite a bit of confusion since the department and purchasing and sometimes even risk management, et cetera, have to be involved in the process. Being able to digitalize the process has made it more organized with proper steps, with um, a proper way to send send the entire request back if changes are needed, and um, has brought structure to the system. And with emails, there's size restrictions, right? There's a lot of um, you know, bad things that happen with emails when you're trying to attach documents to it. Correct. When you're trying to, especially um, our Parks and Rec Department and our Facilities Departments do occasionally need to have construction projects and construction RFPs, so they have to ink, upload um, drawings. And a lot of the times those drawings are too large or were too large for our previous um, website. I'm not sure about the current one, but it's still a little bit easier to store them in a document management system and have them um, basically sent out using public access instead of storing them on our web server. And I know OnBase also has uh, a good way of supporting drawings and things like that. Different. Well, that would, but when I say um, the um, OnBase is our system that we use for storing the documents, so. I should have said on base instead of the um, okay. ECM, Enterprise Content Management. Hey, so, so this is a far-reaching type application, right? This touches every department? It touches every department for RFPs and contracts. Not So some departments have many more RFPs and contracts than others. Like, for example, the department I'm in, which includes facilities and IT, has by far the most RFPs and the most contracts followed by Parks and Rec and Community and Economic Development. There are um, departments like the prosecutor's office that might only have two or three contracts per year that they do, whereas we do two or three contracts a week sometimes. Okay. Hey, uh, Jeff, could you describe your decision-making process as far as whether or not, you know, to purchase a prepackaged solution or configure your own using OnBase? So, our process isn't as well refined. I'd like to share with you our colleagues, what this colleague, our colleagues at the City of Ann Arbor have done. Um, Jake Chase, who's the lead over there for both OnBase and for Share, has set up a um, document where they um, ask a bunch of questions so that they can figure out whether it's an OnBase project, a SharePoint project, or whether they need a, another application for it. Um, for example, short term versioning, whether they need signing, etc. For um, us, we don't have a document, though. I think my boss and I want to look at their document. And we may try to implement our own version of it because I really like the idea. Um, anything that requires a large amount of documents to be stored for a long time, or even if it's a small amount of documents for a long for a long time, we've been using OnBase. Anything that requires an intense workflow process, we have also been trying to use OnBase for too, which is why we've been expanding it in, in housing some of our workflow, like for our public defender, et cetera, and our, our 
request for proposal a few years back. Okay, kind of appreciate, yeah, appreciate you walking us through that uh, decision making tree there. Um, how about, uh, could you give us an overview of your new on base RFP management solution, and how that works? So, right now it uses an e form. If it was designed today, I think we would use WorkView instead of an e form. But um, people first request an RFP number and request the template because the RFP template changes quite a bit as policies change in the county or as the board gives new initiatives. For example, local local vendor preference and um, they just did one with the contractors also. So that changed our RFP um, quite a bit. So the they fill out what date they want, um, who's doing the RFP, and it, the request gets sent to purchasing. Purchasing assigns a buyer and generates the um, request for proposal initial documents. And then after that, those initial documents are sent back to the department in Word document form so that they can edit them in OnBase, have multiple versions of it if they need to roll it back, and get it set up for how they want the RFP to view. And in OnBase, they also have a way to attach supporting documentation, etc., so that it's all stored in the work folder and all related to that request. Once they're done with the request, it's sent back to purchasing so that they can publish the RFP and send out um, notifications through the state system, through the newspaper, etc., about the RFP. And then once we get our bids back, they're uploaded to OnBase. If people want to, they can use OnBase as a collaborative tool because we have created um, sticky notes for them to be able to place things on different pages and comment on things. And we've also set up the documents to be fully text indexed using Autonomy Idle so that they can word search through those documents because some of those documents are, hundred, are hundreds of pages long if it's a really long RFP. I know that, for example, when we were looking for a um, system to replace our ticketing system. Some of the documents that came back were hundreds of pages long. So making multiple copies of that instead of storing it digitally in one place would cost a lot more money, paper, ink, etc. When we can just store it in on base, search for what we want to search for and view the document there. There are still some people that prefer a printed version, but I think what we did is we keep one one printed version in the office and if somebody wants to come and grab it they can otherwise they use the digital version um once the once the winner is picked it's all all that information is put into on base in the e-form and a scoring sheet is uploaded to on base so that purchasing can do a final um a final decision and post it because they also upload, they use OnBase to generate the um, records for the people that were awarded and not awarded and have them automatically sent out to the emails of each person that gave the bid, as well as sending out a paper copy. And then okay. it's also published to the website. Wow. So, Jeff, you took a, a process that you've standardized a very kind of unstructured process and you've given a great deal of transparency over the process across the entire county, right? So for FOIA purposes and, and that, uh, I imagine this is a very valuable type enhancement that you've made to your system. So we even made sure that any bids can be viewed by any county employee that logs into OnBase, whether they use OnBase or not, they have access to certain RFP and contract documents so that they can look them up so that the transparency for the employees is there. As far as um, FOIAs go, if it's on those documents and they've had to do a few, I've created a workflow for them to be able to redact the bids to the um, vendors to what the vendor wants redacted and be able to do that right now based using we don't even use the redaction toolkit. We use the um, revision mm -hmm. and the um, the drawing boxes, etc. Yeah, just using the standard tools within yep. your on-base system. Yeah, 
and then creating versions that have blacked out areas. And then we burn that in as one image so that things under it can't be seen. Because I've seen things redacted incorrectly before. Now, there's a, after the RFP has been awarded, uh, there's a period of time where it could be contested. Does your workflow account for that as well? Yes, it does. We have a queue that holds for protest. If there is a protest that's imported into the system, everything routes to Corporation Council. Corporation Council creates their reply and um, uploads it into OnBase, where it's sent for the county administrator to sign and go out, both via email and via mail. Wow. So this, you know, since you already had contract management in place, this seems like just a natural uh, fit that flows right into that. After it's been awarded, then you move right into contracts. That's correct. And that way everything stays in one system, especially since our new financial system doesn't have a um, very good module for either of these. Terrific. So on basis, filling the gap then where those line of business applications fall short. That is correct. With the benefit of you being able to customize it and tailor it to the unique needs of the county. Yep, and even after something's already gone live, we change it all the time. We have over 100 workflows that are currently in production and on base. We have some that are out of production that were used in the past, but at least 100 are being used currently. We are always changing those workflows. There are some that are left just about all the way alone, and then some that we change every other month to fulfill changes in their process. So it makes it nice that OnBase allows workflows to be changed so easily. Fantastic. Hey, uh, Jeff, how long has your RFP management solution been in place and what kind of feedback are you receiving? Three years, I think it's what it's been in place, maybe four. Um, so we had, we got off to a rocky start because we didn't do as good of a job viewing their and getting their process recorded as we thought we did and we missed quite a few um, extra things that can happen in the process that we had to find ways to add in like rebids and what happens if they don't get um, if they if nobody's awarded etc cetera, etc cetera. so we've had to um, take things that were originally out of scope, including including RFIs that we needed to store in our base and add them to the project. So it really increased the, um, oh, not RFIs, requests, for, yeah, it was RFIs and also requests for quotes. So it's really changed the scope of the project and we had quite a bit of scope creep, but once we were able to get all the things that we needed into it, they've been quite satisfied the last couple of years. So, from you know everything is electronic and flowing from or flowing into on base from your public website as well when vendors go up to your website and they are searching for particular rfps and responding to rfps we did not do the responding part because the board didn't want to make that part digital um that is something I would like to do in the future to give them a way to electronically submit those instead of having to physically walk them to the county. But currently we do not have that in the process. Understand. So that's a future enhancement then. Correct. Okay. Fantastic. So Jeff, I'm, I'm like very impressed with all the great work that you're doing at Washtenaw. Thank you so much uh, for being on the call today. Really appreciate your time. Hey, for our listeners, we appreciate you downloading this podcast. Thank you and have a great day. Thanks again for joining us on this podcast. To learn more about ImageSoft, please visit imagesoftinc.com. That's imagesoftinc.com. If you haven't already done so, be sure to subscribe to Paperless Productivity, where we tackle some of the biggest paper-based pain points facing organizations today. We'll see you next time.